Today we're going to solve a problem of how to lift and lower this garbage can that holds the dust from my dust collector in a way that's simple and locks into place and works every time. So this beautiful monster right here is my dust collection system. The way that it works is that the bandsaw and the table saw both come in this way. The impeller here is sucking air up this way. When the air comes in, it spins around through this cyclone to pull out all the heavy dust. That heavy dust drops down into this garbage can, and this garbage can is what we're talking about today. Okay, so this Oscar the Grouch style garbage can is being held up here by this pile of assorted items. The cyclone and everything else is mounted to the wall, but this is just being pushed up underneath. If I took this stuff out, the garbage can would fall. I don't want this pile of stuff here, and I want an easy way to lift and lower the garbage can into place. So today I'm gonna to build a mechanism that does just that. It should lift the garbage can up and down easily without having to jam a bunch of stuff under there. It should be able to lock it up in place. The whole thing is gonna mount on the wall just kind of underneath the garbage can, and I think it's gonna be pretty slick. All right, I'm psyched to build this thing. Let's go. Stick around and check it out. I'm psyched. To... So this is the first prototype that I made for this. It's a parallelogram mechanism with basically a little box on the front and back and a handle here that allows me to lift it up. So the handle is here on one arm and when I lift that I immediately see that this thing is twisting. Is that this handle needs to be in the middle and that force needs to be applied there directly under the garbage can ideally. This parallelogram mechanism is really the best thing that came to my mind for how to solve this problem. But if you have a better idea, totally let me know in the comments because I would love to hear it. So to get the arms and the force under the can, I'm going with a shape that's narrower at the bottom than it is at the top. The two lower arms can push up on the can when lifted from the front. I don't know what to call this thing, but it has eight sides, so I'm going to call it an octagon. The octagon box that mounts to the wall has four blocks in it that let the pivot rods pass through, and that's all sandwiched together with a second octagon also made of plywood. The arms are then attached to the flat sides of the octagon the arms on the top are long enough to support the can and the arms on the bottom are longer to allow a handle to stick out in the front. Then there's a second octagon box that swings with the arms and on top of that a platform that the can sits on. All right, so I'll start by cutting up some plywood for those front and back octagons. I'm going to need four of these, two for the box on the wall and two for the box that goes up and down. Then I'll just go ahead and draw out the shape that I'm gonna be cutting. Uh, during this process, I basically realized that it's too narrow at the bottom and that if I wanted to have a handle in there, I was gonna have to make it a little wider. So I just fixed it. There was nothing magical about the dimension that I originally had, so uh, I changed it on the fly. Then I'll cut those all out on the bandsaw. I'm doing some stop cuts for these narrow parts in the bottom and the diagonal parts I will do freehand. I'm gonna cut out those four blocks for the pivot rods that are on each of the two octagon boxes. I'm making this out of some scrap ash that I have laying around and I'll start by ripping it down to width on the table saw and then I can just go ahead and set up a stop block on my crosscut sled and batch out eight of these little guys which is what I need. So here are the two octagon boxes with the four blocks in each one. There's gonna be 
holes in each of those blocks so that these rods can pass right through and then the arms can pivot on those rods. I'm cutting the arms out of some leftover plywood that is from a miter saw station that I recently took apart. It's 11 layer plywood, so it's really good for something like these arms, which need a lot of strength and not gonna twist at all. Then I can set up a stop block on the fence of the table saw, which I will use to cut them all down to length. That stop block is made of three quarter inch plywood and the fence is just three quarters of an inch further than I would normally need it to be. This is a good technique. You just have to make sure that your stop block and your blade are never touching the wood at the same time. So the wood needs to be clear of that stop block piece before it gets to the blade. In each of these eight blocks, we're gonna need a hole for this rod to go through, which will be the pivot point. That'll also pass through the arm on either end, allowing us to go up and down like that. The arms on the bottom are gonna extend out past like that so that I can have a handle at the far end that sticks out in front of the trash can that I can reach down to. Meanwhile, at the drill press, I've got all eight of my blocks marked with an F for front and a T for top. And I've got two stops on here that are marked F and T to get that in there because I wanna make sure that the holes, I don't really care if they're centered on the block. I care that they're all in the same location on the block relative to the front and the top of the main houses that they're moving in. So I also have these with a little clearance underneath so I don't get any dust in there because it gets pretty annoying to try and get dust out when you're using the drill press. I'm gonna start with a pilot hole first and then do the full 5 16 hole because I don't want the 5 16 drill walking at all and the eighth inch will just go right in. So now back to the arms, I'm gonna use some double-sided tape to put them all together in a stack, both the short top arms and the long bottom arms. And then I'm gonna drill out the holes on all of them together. It's not really that important where the holes are. The only thing that matters is that they are the same distance from each other. So this will guarantee that that's the case. I'm trying to get them centered on the arms, but it doesn't actually matter that much. All right, and I'm putting a little chamfer around these arms, not a round over. And that's just so they don't get caught on the rest of the apparatus as it moves up and down and they'll feel a little nicer in the hand and they'll look a little nicer in the shop. All right, then I'm about ready to glue these octagon boxes up. Uh, before I do that, I'm putting a little tape onto the tops because my plan is to glue the blocks onto the octagon backing and then spray paint it so that I can spray paint the inside. In retrospect, I think this was all kind of silly. I don't know why I did it, but I'm showing you here because otherwise things would be confusing. Uh, so with the tape on the bottom here, you can't see it. I'll just uh, put some glue on to the blocks and then Brad nail the assembly together. And then I'll just glue those guys on face to face to save on clamps. Then 
those are the octagon boxes all glued up and I'll just add a little chamfer to them. All right, all my wood parts are cut and glued and painted, and I'm gonna move on over to the steel rods that I'm using as the pivot points for the arms. This is some 5 16 steel that I'm gonna cut on my bandsaw here. And then at one end of each of these rods, I'm gonna grind a flat in it so that I can more easily drill a hole through and the reason I'm doing this is so that I can put some kind of linch pin in there to prevent the thing from sliding out on the other end I'm just gonna weld a nut on there it doesn't really matter what I'm welding on here but the point is to just prevent it from sliding out the fit of those rods into these 5 16th holes was tight before I painted everything so I'm just gonna do a little reaming out of these holes to get the rods to fit in there with a little less difficulty. I'm just gonna mark where the bottom of the trash can is on the wall so that I can then mount the back of the apparatus against the wall at that point. Okay, so now I'm gonna get all this stuff out of the way. As you can see, this process is really annoying and having to do this every time I empty my can of dust is not cool. So this is the reason that I'm building the lift here is so that I don't have to deal with doing this every time. It's much easier to pull the handle and lock it up and pull the handle and lock it down. So to mount this thing on the wall, I need to be able to drive screws through the back piece of plywood. So I'm drilling these access holes into the front piece of plywood and then using this little block as a perpendicular guide, I'm drilling some holes through the back piece so that I can screw in through those holes. My wall is made of three quarter inch pine as a sheathing material. So I want to make sure that I can get this into some studs here. I'm just using a piece of plywood to span across the two studs and then I'll mount the back octagon block to that piece of plywood. It just makes the whole thing a little bit sturdier and more robust rather than having to have it hang off of the pine. So if you never understood these things, this is exactly what it's for. You put the bit in there and then you can put the screw in in a way where it won't fall out. All right, so that is my quick test and it seems to work pretty well. Now I just need to work on the locking mechanism so that it stays up when I lift it up. So I've got this piece here, which is gonna attach to the underside of the platform and it's got a little back bevel. And then you can see, I'll mark right there. That allow me to make a piece here, which attaches to this front bar 
that can hook over the top. Let's do that. Since I'm going to make two of these things, I'm going to brad nail together a couple of pieces of plywood that are about the right shape, and those brad nails will just get cut away as I shape the thing on the bandsaw. Okay, I've got that little lip piece out in front, which is not a back bevel, and I'm just attaching the platform to the top of the lift. I have these octagonal pieces laying around from a previous project, and they're going to make perfect handles for the front assembly. So I'll cut two of them down to the same length and then I will go ahead and mark the centers of both ends of each of them. That way I can take them over to the drill press, put a pilot hole into each end, and then go ahead and drill through from both ends with the 5 16 hole. The handle assembly is gonna come together like this and I can mount it right to the front of the lower arm where I'll be able to grab it and it will also be able to hook onto the little lip piece that hangs off the platform. And with that, the mechanism works. I can take the trash can out, put the trash can back and lock it in place again. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.